Hello, uh, good afternoon, distinguished uh, colleagues, speakers, yeah. and participants. Welcome to Geospatial Technology for Digital Twin and Green Economies. This event is a series of Geospatial Artificial Intelligence International Short Course and Seminar. In today's session, we will have uh, three speakers from OvoTech Malaysia, InTechX Creation Malaysia, and Braga Technologies uh, Indonesia. Before we start the event, uh, the Dean of School of Computer Science, Binus University, Dr. Freddy Purnomo, will give his opening remarks. Okay, good afternoon to all participants from Indonesia and Malaysia. On behalf of School of Computer Science, Minus University, I would like to thank you all for being here us today. I really appreciate you AI Research and Innovation Lab, Minus University, for taking the initiative to organize the geospatial artificial intelligence short course and international seminar with a team geospatial technologies for digital twin and green economics. I would like to thank our partner from SC Indonesia, uh, Leica Geosystem, University Technology Mara Malaysia, Hello, University Putra Malaysia, Brawijaya University, and Mulawarman University. I would also like to thank and welcome today's speaker, Mr. Muhammad Armi bin Abdul Majid from OVO Tech Malaysia, Dr. Nurdin Ahmad from Intech Creation Malaysia, and Mr. Dirga Sumantri from Braga Technologies Indonesia. We cannot deny that the development of technology is increasing day by day. Geospatial and artificial intelligence are part of computer science that has many benefits for our life. By participating in the international short course, which has been held in the last two days, I hope will bridge new ideas and creation from the participants to contribute to the environment. Today, we gather together to celebrate the final event which is the international seminar for our esteemed speaker. I hope we all can get the best experience from this event and we can still collaborate together in the future. Thank you and enjoy the seminar. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Freddy. I would like to introduce you to our moderator for Today's session, Mr. Fabian Surya Pramudia, PhD. Mr. Fabian uh, Surya Pramudia is the subject content coordinator and mathematics lecturer at Binus University. Dr. Fabian holds a PhD from the Chinese University of Hong Kong in the field of remote sensing, ge in geographic information systems, and cartography. He also graduated from the, the Bandung Institute of Technology for his master's and bachelor's degree. His dedicated research professional are skilled in remote sensing application for postal management. Without further ado, Dr. Fabian, the screen is yours. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ajeng. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone. Uh, very warm welcome for uh, joining this international seminars. Uh, it's in Friday. Uh, which means tomorrow is a weekend. So hope, hopefully you can get something uh, from the seminars as usual and uh, that we can uh, have some takeouts for our weekends. Yep. Uh, so uh, in Venus Fridays, usually we have uh, a lot of some seminars, which is uh, for the speakers. Uh, as in Venus, we have the academics uh, day in Friday. So we usually have lots of seminars uh, in Friday, which it might give us some time to thinking during the weekend and then the next week we can be like starting the our academic's life uh, more fresher so uh without for, further ado uh, i would like to say assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, shalom uh, salam kebajikan 
And then for every of you is joining the seminar, uh, we have three speakers today, ladies and gentlemen. And we also have, because we have students lectures, uh, we also have uh, from government that we invited, government uh, and uh, some other like lecture from Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, so uh, for these uh, seminars, uh, I, I would like to introduce you to, to our schedule today. So uh, each of the speakers will be have 30 to 40, 45 minutes. So we make it uh, a very quite uh, short because we don't have quite some time for this. So we have 30 to 45 minutes for uh, each of the speakers and then we can continue if you have some questions you can raise uh, your hands in the end of the sessions or you can uh, put down your questions in the chat group so uh, as the question and answer session we put that in the end of the presentation so each of uh, the speakers will give their uh, uh, like lecture first and then in the fourth session we're going to have the question and answer and discussions for maybe 30 minutes for every uh, questions that we have. So without further ado, I would like to present our uh, first speaker uh, representing uh, Mr. Muhammad Armi bin Abdul Majid as the founder and managing director of OFO uh, Tech Com Company. I would like to introduce you to uh, Mr. Amshar Pais. So he is the chief business development officer at OFO Tech Company. He is very fluent in broad discipline from classical to the cutting edge of technologies and uh, being the panelist of uh, meeting Minds Forum in 2019 and also uh, being a keynote speaker at Drone Track 2020 and also guest speaker for E-Nation Conference 2021. So uh, he also being part of the formidable O4 team and Mr. Amshar over a breath of insight and ideas from real world industries and a glimpse of its technologies, especially in geospatial technologies to come. So uh, without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Amshar Faiz for 30 to 45 minutes, sir, for uh, the time and screen is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Fabian. Um, uh, thank you for that kind introduction. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, very good afternoon to everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Amshar Faiz. I am the best Chief Business Development uh, Officer at Ofotech. Uh, I do apologize uh, firsthand. Um, I am substituting, as mentioned, for our managing director and founder, uh, Mr. Abdul Majid, Armi Abdul Majid, who unfortunately uh, cannot be with us uh, for today. Uh, though he sends his regards to everyone and hopes to be able to join uh, in other events uh, moving forward in the future, inshallah. Uh, bye. Uh, so for me, uh, let's kick start uh, with our presentation today. Um, so if everyone can confirm uh, the screen uh, is popping up, uh, we can start off uh, with the set presentation. Bye. Uh, great. Thanks, Tony. Uh, so moving on to this uh, exciting topic uh, for our international seminars discussion, uh, geospatial technologies for digital twin uh, and green economics. Uh, I shall be starting off. Um, our presentation touching more on uh, present day applications uh, for industries uh, and use cases uh, using geospatial technologies. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, just a quick five minutes, allow me to uh, introduce our company. We have in the past engaged Pinus, UITM uh, and others. Um, but for those of you who do not know, just a quick recap on who we are. So basically, as mentioned, we are a Malaysian company. We were formed in 2016. Uh, today, we are a multi-award winning technology innovations company uh, and a leading geospatial AI uh, company in Malaysia as well as in the region. So basically what we do is we do digital transformation uh, solutions for our clients. So we cater to broad engineering, intelligent industrial applications. So we're talking about the construction industry, um, infrastructure, oil and gas, agriculture, plantation, telecommunication, uh, and much, much more. So the list is not... Uh, exhaustive. Even as we speak, there are new verticals um, combining or adopting uh, the technology applications such as smart city applications, uh, disaster risk management, or even border insecurity. Uh, 
So talking of the technology, uh, basically we are a geo AI company. So geospatial artificial intelligence. I understand um, I'm talking to a crowd of uh, geospatial students, uh, GIS, remote sensing, um, global positioning systems, cartography, that constitutes geospatial. However, we are adding on uh, with artificial intelligence, the latest machine learning and computer vision technologies. Uh, other key applications in IR 4.0 includes big data analytics, um, IoT, industrial IoT technologies, augmented virtual reality, uh, and much, much more. So basically what we do here at OFO Tech, uh, for those of you who are interested to apply for internship after uh, finishing university, uh, we basically provide end-to-end -end asset management services for all of these clients. Uh, so heavy industry have assets, they need to be managed. So what we do is we use ge geospatial digital twinning technologies, artificial intelligence in order for our clients to be able to optimize their asset management operations. So that's just the gist on our company introduction. Uh, moving forward uh, onto the next slide, we are based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So um, for those of you who have the free time uh, in Malaysia or Indonesia, um, we do invite you to drop by our office to see more on our in-house infrastructure. We are uh, scattered nationwide, uh, Sabah, Sarawak, as well as uh, in Semenanjung, and also our first international office in Jakarta, Indonesia, as of 2019. So the invitation also extends to our uh, Indonesian students, uh, for those of you who are interested to learn more. Um, that on our uh, company uh, location presence, uh, moving forward, as mentioned, just a breakdown on the expertise that I have previously highlighted. So basically, AI is a new thing. Um, it's definitely trending. Uh, these days, but AI itself is a broad subject. Uh, what we focus more on is computer vision and machine learning. Uh, and other than that, as I've mentioned, IoT, Internet of Things, uh, drones, um, UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle, uh, robotics, and also augmented virtual reality. Uh, so these are uh, some of the key technology platforms. Uh, I am pretty sure uh, some are familiar to our students, uh, but we will be touching more on these uh, later on as we progress through the presentation uh, in the next slide. Uh, basically, that's pretty much it. I'll just make it quick and short onto our company introduction. As mentioned, just to highlight, we are in the business of digitalizing our clients' reality, digital transformation for clients' asset management. Uh, so that is just uh, some teaser for what we will be covering uh, later on in the next slide. Uh, moving on to um, the methodology. This is just some technical um, technical information for our dear viewers. Uh, basically, the four pillars of our company, of Tech, how we operate. This is certainly relevant to many of uh, our students' uh, courses that they have taken uh, throughout the semester, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but nevertheless, just to give you some insights on how industry players are actually um, operating. So we start off on the far left, data acquisition, the first pillar. So data acquisition, actually, in terms of um, data, we have to acquire it first. So uh, in terms of geospatial, uh, GIS, I'm pretty sure many are familiar with uh, satellite uh, acquisition. That is one of the popular uh, methodologies, certainly. Uh, but as of today, we have newer alternatives, uh, such as drones, UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles. They uh, present a good option uh, in order for us to do uh, data acquisition or data collection processes. But of course, in terms of um, spatial information, any camera actually suffices whether it be a CCTV camera, a smartphone camera, they also um, can act as a viable uh, alternative for data collection method itself. Uh, depends on what data, of course, it is that we uh, intend to capture. Nevertheless, once we've captured in the first pillar, data acquisition, we move on to the second pillar, which is data processing. So we process the data, uh, calibrate and render the information into various wonderful outputs such as digital twinning technologies, a point cloud, reality mesh, augmented reality, so on and so forth. So that output uh, is very valuable for clients because that enables them to move on to the third pillar, which is data analysis, or in this case, AI analysis. We enable that information uh, to give value or insight for clients, uh, retrieving information for the best data-driven decision-making processes uh, for their operations. And the final pillar is data platform. Once clients have collected data, once they've processed it, and once they have analyzed that information, we enable clients to host all information on a single viewing platform or a single database. Uh, so mm -hmm. that would pretty much be the end-to-end -end pillar uh, for our uh, process methodology. Uh, this, 
I assure you, uh, I will clarify later on. Uh, moving on to the next slide, I do apologize for some excessive technical terminologies. Um, in the next slide, just to uh, segue into today's topic, uh, geospatial technologies, digital twin, as well as uh, green economy. So we will be using the previous four pillars uh, in our next uh, 30 to 25 minutes uh, of uh, breakdown. So in our case, OFOTEC, we specialize in four sectors. So the four sectors being, as you see here, being construction, infrastructure, agriculture plantation, as well as property and insurance. So basically we provide geospatial applications in order for these clients in these sectors to optimize, to cut costs, eliminate risk, uh, and add on efficiency onto their asset management operations. So in industries today, allow me to share first, starting off with construction industries. How do construction industries utilize such technologies, digital training, to operate in current events. Uh, in the next slide, um, I will be covering more on uh, construction uh, as mentioned. Uh, basically to give you an overview um, uh, in the next slide of the construction industry. Basically construction and agriculture, they represent the least um, digital oriented uh, sectors. So uh, they are very conventional and uh, very traditional. Uh, in their approach. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in recent days, we have seen uh, newer technology applications uh, being forefronted uh, in construction industry itself. As I've mentioned, such as digital twinning, in order for the operators and contractors uh, to optimize uh, their asset operation uh, and project monitoring. So this is critical for any asset, uh, linear asset, point asset, so on and so forth, in order for the asset owner uh, to be assured that the project uh, is according to the timeline and as well as the plan. Uh, moving forward, I shall give you uh, the example uh, in this video. So one of our projects involvement uh, for the Pan Borneo Highway uh, construction project. So this is a major project commissioned by the government in Malaysia, uh, 830 kilometer highway construction. So basically, um, the clients are required to monitor the progress of this entire four-year life cycle construction uh, without them being on site themselves uh, remote, remotely. So what we do is we went to site, uh, flew our drones, UAVs, and captured the information, and we uploaded it uh, onto our system. So thereby, with this platform, uh, we can enable the governments uh, to monitor the entire four-year life cycle of this construction process uh, in order for them to verify uh, payment processes for contractors. Uh, in other words, to ensure that the contractor's work is, exactly, uh, is according to the time schedule. So as you can see, uh, accuracy-wise, um, satellite and drone imagery, uh, we can offer up to 10 to 30 times better uh, in terms of resolution, uh, up to two to three centimeters accurate, uh, in fact, uh, thereby enabling us to even overlay the consultant drawing plan here, uh, as you see in front of the screen. Uh, so with this feature, um, as you can imagine, we enable the contractors on the ground to be best assured whatever they're building is exactly according to plan. So for example, let's say uh, five to 10 kilometers ahead or even 50 kilometers ahead, there is an error. They can anticipate much earlier, thereby avoiding uh, making such mistakes, uh, thereby avoiding cost overrun, uh, as previously mentioned, and also avoiding time overrun. Naturally, uh, previously people have been using satellite imagery or even uh, helicopters as a form of data acquisition. Nevertheless, uh, this is a very expensive uh, option, whereas drone technology has recently been adding a much more cheaper alternative. As you can see, uh, for this 830 kilometer highway, a linear asset uh, example is possible. But this is just a 2D uh, demonstration, of course. Um, digital twin can also be reformed further into uh, 3D, uh, for example. Moving forward uh, in the next slide. Uh, so other examples uh, for construction industry, uh, we, for example, cater to the ministry, uh, the government of works here in Malaysia, in order for them to monitor, uh, create a new standard uh, in project monitoring. Uh, in the next slide, uh, what we envision uh, is to develop a platform, a centralized database, uh, whereby all working levels from the asset owner uh, up to the site worker itself uh, can monitor all the projects uh, currently um, being embarked. For example, here in Malaysia, every year, about 60 to 80 new projects are being embarked, new projects are being commissioned, uh, thereby 
uh, we enable a form of geospatial platform uh, to monitor all these construction sites uh, in a much more uh, updated uh, and accurate uh, manner, as you see here. This is an example of a hospital in Sarawak. In Sarawak, Borneo, there are certain issues uh, in terms of um, good connection, so on and so forth. Uh, remotely, uh, it's a rural area, thereby there is lack of infrastructure, logistics difficult. So we enable uh, the HQ, uh, whether in Semenanjung uh, or elsewhere, to monitor the progress, irrespective of where the project is currently taking place. So this is just a quick 2D view, aerial footage. Uh, you see satellite imagery and drone imagery. Um, there's a stark clarity between uh, the clarity and resolution. Uh, very, very obvious. Uh, further on, you can even overlay uh, the detailed engineering design, uh, the master plan on top uh, of the as-built uh, imagery as well in order for further clarity and further validation uh, to, be, uh, to be performed. So various overlays uh, at different time intervals, whether weekly, monthly, yearly, can be uh, overlaid on top of each other, thereby making sure uh, the entire life cycle uh, will be accessible and visible for clients. As mentioned, uh, 2D data uh, for this point asset can even be reformed uh, into 3D uh, reality mesh or even point cloud. Uh, so that thereby uh, enabling clients, uh, contractors, uh, consultants to be able to get more multi-dimensional uh, viewing uh, of uh, the site construction itself. Uh, so basically in terms of uh, project monitoring, uh, for contractors uh, or the asset owners, there are three things um, that are of concern uh, during uh, the project undertaking, that, which would be machinery, manpower, and material. So, but, so with these three M's, uh, this will constitute the project's progress or success uh, should these three M's uh, be correct. Uh, so with this system, digital twinning, we can enable uh, to monitor and validate that everything is on site itself. Uh, so here you see uh, other form per, per analytical perform, uh, cross-section analysis, uh, length, uh, distances, uh, volumetric measurement, stock in terms of stockpile, so on and so forth, can also be performed, uh, thereby ensuring that the clients uh, or the asset owner uh, to monitor or validate the three M's, manpower, stockpile, as well as machinery. Artificial intelligence over and beyond can also add on to that, uh, creating a real-time detection monitoring system, uh, making sure that the workers are there, manpower, every car is apart, uh, making sure that the machinery are all available uh, and also making sure um, the machinery are operating uh, and that all the uh, stockpile uh, and uh, material are present. In this uh, application, for over and beyond, we can add or subtract features uh, for clients, uh, tapping onto more um, data acquisition from uh, CCTVs, uh, smartphone camera itself, even the site work on the ground. Uh, there is a new incident, a uh, new finding. He can capture without the smartphone, uh, capture using his mobile uh, smartphone and just upload onto the system. And online via cloud, everything will be updated. So even the command center at the HQ uh, can uh, be updated on real-time uh, status or real-time new findings that has occurred. So work progress, uh, work order, everything uh, will also be included onto the platform. So these are other applications uh, in terms of uh, applications uh, for operations on top of digital twinning that can be added. So that's just some um, example uh, demonstration of how uh, the construction industry uh, can add. Uh, this is AR, augmented reality. I am aware I'm talking to a bunch of millennials and uh, young people. So I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with AR, augmented reality, and how uh, gaming industry has been revolutionized with this. But also, not just gaming industry, even for construction industry, uh, AR can actually add a layer of uh, uh, features on top of that. Uh, Tony, if you can just, uh, sorry, play the uh, video again. Ah, thank you. Uh, so this is a construction uh, of a point building, a commercial, uh, residents uh, in uh, Kuala Lumpur. So we enable the asset owner to view uh, the construction progress uh, at a three month interval, I believe. So anyone these days have a smartphone, a tablet. Uh, so imagine in a boardroom meeting, everyone just popping out their device and putting on an AR simulation on top of a table. Uh, AR simulation, not um, computer generated, 
but in re reality driven uh, what you see here is exactly what you get on the ground uh, so uh, that defines uh, or, or distinguishes this type of augmented reality based on a reality uh, driven asset uh, so that would be some of the uh, potential applications for digital training uh, geospatial applications for construction allow me to move forward um, in onto infrastructure I'll, I'll try to make haste I am, I am aware of the time limitation. <clears throat> so infrastructure uh, itself can be broken into a lot of derivations. So infrastructure, roads, uh, bridges, slopes. So these are all infrastructure and there are much, many, many, many more types of asset infrastructure. Uh, but what we previously, uh, you saw uh, with our involvement for the Pan Borneo Highway, we also involved ourselves largely in roads. So uh, roads actually uh, constitute one of the largest type of infrastructure so anywhere in this world any country they have roads so uh, nevertheless maintenance uh, maintenance of all these uh, roads are very difficult uh, currently uh, in today's uh, conventional uh, application uh, whereby roads are very extensive very broad runs hundreds thousands of kilometers uh, accumulatively uh, in indonesia i'm pretty sure uh, that is a big market uh, to explore um, other issues, um, once you actually detect a damage, road damage, um, it's difficult to actually be able to update that information. It's, able, it's difficult to geotrack that information. It's also difficult uh, to be able to list down the types of information, the type of various types of asset damage, potholes, surface cracks, uh, or even asset furniture damage. That's even a bigger nightmare for clients. Uh, we're talking about um, guardrail, uh, talking about um, LED uh, signboards, uh, these all need to be audited, these all need to be managed. Uh, but it's a very big issue because as I previously mentioned, roads are very extensive. So infrastructure-wise, roads is a big problem, a big market uh, that we have included uh, the geospatial, mm -hmm. geo-AI technology in order to enhance. So basically, uh, we are adapting AI, uh, artificial intelligence, specifically computer vision uh, to automate certain processes um, for road maintenance or road management. Um, moving forward in the next slide, uh, just uh, a quick illustration of what I mean. So roads, they have um, active roads, that is, they have wear and tear uh, damages that are occurring on, uh, on a daily basis. So what we have these days, we have CCTV cameras, we have drones, a satellite, of course, uh, but also we can tap onto dash cameras inside vehicles. So these are just streaming raw footage, but raw footage we add on uh, with AI to power uh, the analytical application processes in terms of detecting asset damage. So we are automating the asset damage detection process. So conventionally, we have to drive a patrol car. You see a pothole, for example, you stop the car, you go out, you measure, take a picture, and you register everything, and then you repeat the cycle. You have to drive hundreds, uh, tens of thousands, tens of kilometers, in fact. That's very tedious. So imagine now we are just using a camera inside a car, we just drive, and automatically everything will be captured. So uh, in the next video, uh, we'll highlight uh, my previous uh, description. Uh, so just a corporate a product a demo of um, a new solution called Envis, Enhanced Vision. Uh, basically, just what I previously described, lah, the solution is, is a combination of uh, remote sensing, uh, GIS and AI, uh, computer vision. So as you see, there's a dash camera hardware, um, a hardware inside the moving car. Any car is possible, a car, a bike, a waste, garbage, a bus, taxi, whatever. When the car drives, automatically it will collect information pertaining the road damage potholes, surface crack. Not only do we, does it um, detect, it classifies into the various types uh, of damage. Uh, it measures the dimensions um, in terms of surface crack, what type of cracks form and so forth. So all this information upon detection will be sent to the command center for our clients to detect and escalate the process to repair. So as you see here, uh, the system is uh, supporting both uh, smartphone and also web-based, but for smartphone, Android, and iOS, the interface very user-friendly. Upon logging in, there will be a base map. You can see all the new finding. You click on any particular new finding and it will redirect you to the information. So the status, the date uh, of detection, the coordinates. I'm pretty sure you're all very fascinated with coordinates. And of course, uh, 
in the status whether or not it has been captured whether or not it has been uh, repaired so you can even um, put on a work order uh, assign a team to actually uh, repair uh, and proceed a split process so on and so forth so all information uh, will be available at the tip of our clients fingers so irrespective of how vast extensive a highway may be we have active patrol cars or even uh, garbage trucks here in malaysia we are partnering up with Alam Flora, a garbage truck company, and KDEB. So while they are collecting trash, we have our smart cameras inside, collecting all information of road conditions. So that will be, of course, our first step uh, in terms of uh, data collection. So the information uh, that we start off, as I previously mentioned, road conditions, uh, these are critical uh, for highway concessionaires, uh, for municipal uh, government or even the authorities, uh, the central government, uh, to be able to uh, monitor or be able to manage uh, all their um, road asset infrastructure much better. So as previously mentioned, even uh, available um, via uh, web base, uh, all information we image or we aspire to collect layers and layers of uh, geospatial information um, and creating a heat map. Uh, so ultimately to have a live GIS of life active uh, infrastructure occurrences uh, which can ultimately add on to the experience in terms of uh, in terms of management etc operations so on and so forth so that would be just one example of uh, how infrastructure uh, can um, integrate uh, geospatial applications geo ai of course um, in order to enhance uh, so the idea of course this is just some other um, illustration uh, of the previous example uh, is post-processing just to have a data collection device while the patrol car um, is operational. We are collecting all information. Uh, what previously was uh, executed by uh, manual labor currently can actually be automated. So the more data acquisition devices we have, the more collection uh, we can start off collecting. Uh, and sending um, into the information. And ultimately, we can improve on uh, the information. Currently, what the manual approach, I believe, uh, Dr. Nordin, uh, correct me if I'm wrong later on, um, one picture that uh, the patrol car or the inspector takes, um, if there are multiple asset furniture, they will just log on one coordinate. Um, nevertheless, uh, our approach uh, later on, where we try to improve the system, uh, is in order for us to distinguish all various types of assets. For example, um, the feeder pillar, uh, the traffic light, uh, guardrail, all information we can actually automate and assign and label accurate coordinates. Uh, so that's the next step uh, of AI, uh, I believe, is quite fascinating on our end. Uh, so, moving forward, uh, mm -hmm. other applications uh, for geospatial applications uh, in the next slide. Uh, this is just some more demo. Um, the detection of a certain type of error can be performed uh, seamlessly uh, using any type of patrol cars. As you drive, um, we are adding information uh, and adding value to current operators at the industry in general, mm -hmm. uh, which currently is a very big market, I would say. Uh, the road asset infrastructure um, industry uh, in terms of maintenance itself is billions, uh, relatively speaking. So uh, very outdated methods. Uh, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. It can be a bad thing, but it can be a good thing for us, uh, for you, of course. Um, the younger generation, um, once graduating, can explore more um, newer disciplines uh, in terms of adding value to current operations. Um, right, uh, the next slide. Um, I believe the next example would be for agriculture, plantation, um, moving on uh, in the next slide. Uh, just some finishing off with some other demos to detect all the various particularities uh, the subject matters, um, culverts, um, drains, um, signboards, uh, traffic lights, so on and so forth. Uh, for auditing, 
inspection. This is a big issue. Every year, every year they have to renew or audit. Uh, but the problem, of course, is uh, uh, how big road infrastructures are. So with minimal manpower, how do you actually achieve this with the least cost and uh, as the fastest duration, right? So AI certainly can uh, be an answer uh, to that problem. Uh, so green economy, I believe this would constitute some of the uh, aspects of green economy. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so sustainable living, I guess, this is something that we can uh, optimize uh, operations. For example, garbage truck operations while collecting trash, optimizing that and collecting data on uh, road conditions. So this is uh, surface cracks, the type of surface cracks, longitudinal cracks, crocodile cracks, uh, transverse cracks. So uh, they all need to be factored in, all this data, machine learning. Uh, the more data you have, the more accurate it becomes. So uh, while trucks are collecting, the more patrol cars we have, we are collecting more and more and more data. The more data we have, the more accurate it becomes. And uh, that's where the more data set you have, the more you can be able to do hypothesis so hypothesis um, predictions. Uh, so that that's where uh, the exciting uh, the exciting uh, uh, opportunity actually lies. Uh, where to predict where new potholes are going to pop up, so on and so forth. Uh, very interesting. Uh, very interesting. So uh, as promised, moving forward, uh, just uh, some other description summary on uh, infrastructure. Now we go on. To, oh, bridges. Uh, I'm sorry not agriculture, not plantation. We'll finish off with infrastructure. The other types of asset infrastructure uh, are of course bridges. So uh, in the next slide, uh, other uh, potential application uh, to utilize, uh, in this case, point cloud, um, integrating with uh, automated AI, of course. Uh, you can actually monitor uh, the 3D simulation itself in terms of uh, bridge monitoring uh, to, to, to ensure um, the structural integrity uh, of the bridge. Uh, there are various uh, methods uh, that can be deployed. Uh, here, one of it, you can see um, our clients monitoring uh, some aspects uh, of the bridges, uh, both top and on the bottom, uh, in order to ensure uh, that everything uh, is uh, uh, as required. So you see the clarity, um, very nice. This is a mesh, a reality mesh. Uh, so a very good clarity visual uh, that can be offered uh, simply using a drone, uh, flying a drone. Uh, you have the right flight path, capture information, you process it, uh, you can get uh, a very accurate simulation uh, of that uh, subject matter. And with that, you can do a lot of uh, post-processing, post-analytical applications, uh, as I've mentioned, for the purpose of managing this asset. <coughs> Sorry. So, so you can even uh, label uh, various uh, subject matters, anomalies, let's say greenery on the right. Uh, so there is a uh, Vijawijawan greenery that is uh, uh, overstretching. So we can even automate that uh, label information, upload that. So next inspection ai the drone just flies automatically it can recognize again that subject matter add-on uh, to the list of uh, detection uh, inventory so on and so forth uh, so it can uh, audit uh, analyze and do its further reporting yeah so that would be bridges uh, allow me to move forward uh, ar yes so uh, Previously, there was a highway uh, building. Now, why not a bridge? So augmented reality of SKVE um, highway, um, which has a bridge uh, at the end of it, uh, which can also uh, be reformed, uh, processed into an augmented reality. So now our clients don't actually have to go on site to show their bosses, um, their managing directors. In fact, inside a boardroom meeting, they just whip up the smartphone and they will put this subject matter um, as built on top of the table. So everyone can just wiggle around and view 
this particular bridge condition, et cetera, et cetera. So another layer of uh, data presentation uh, that can be included uh, for current uh, practices. Moving forward, uh, agriculture plantation. Yes. So uh, agriculture plantation, as previously mentioned, is one of the other sectors which is the least digitalized um, along with uh, construction, of course. Uh, but today we see a newer trend. Um, the players these days, uh, they realize competitors uh, are increasing yield, cutting costs, so on and so forth. So uh, this is largely due to technology. And of course, there will be a, a snowball effect where everyone will be um, looking into uh, precision farming or uh, uh, smart farming, as they call it, uh, in, in integrating these technologies uh, to enhance uh, the operations. So uh, these are some of the uh, features, never mind, uh, some video uh, to uh, regale our audience on the many applications. So this is the same platform we used previously for uh, the construction and infrastructure demo, but similarly, uh, it can be adapted for agriculture plantation. So let's say clients, um, they have land, that, like large, hundreds, thousands of acres of land, right? But remotely, you cannot rely on Google Earth, right? As you see here, very outdated. So what you do is you'll have to capture uh, the image yourself using a drone. Um, as you can see, clarity much better. You overlay it. And you can see uh, the imagery, uh, area imagery of, let's say, your plantation. And this is uh, eucalyptus plantation. So AI, of course, uh, you integrate it. You do some uh, automated tree counting. Uh, enables clients to uh, uh, get a better clarity of the size of their land and how many expected trees. Uh, helps out for uh, yield, uh, yield projections and inventory uh, management, of course. Uh, and as everyone knows, um, every picture, uh, there is a GPS a coordinate uh, tag. So every image that the site worker collects, uploads, can actually be uh, tracked uh, ultimately on top, uh, overlaying it on top of the auto mosaic previous 2D uh, footage uh, map that has been previously displayed. So standard imagery, um, videos, all of this information helps our clients to get transparency, to monitor um, their land. So let's say they are here in KL, but they have land, in this case, Kuala Bertis, Kelantan. So they need to monitor it, make sure that the site workers are not lacking, that they're working and what they're doing is actually according to what has been instructed by the board or by the management team. So all this information actually validates um, operations. So also on top of that, giving uh, additional insights, let's say, uh, the 2D map, uh, 3D provides, uh, as previously, uh, length distance measurement, topographical features, DTM, DSM, so on and so forth. So uh, that is certainly something uh, agriculture plantation sector uh, have been utilizing um, largely in order for them to optimize, uh, enhance the operations. So similarly, uh, mobile app, um, let's say the site worker, well, you need internet, of course. Um, Hopefully, 5G can uh, uh, increase uh, the, the potential. So uh, in, in rural areas, even site workers uh, in real time can log on information, uh, upload images, and automatically uh, the top management will be alerted uh, on their uh, devices, for example. So the interface is similar to uh, uh, what is provided in web-based. So uh, 3D, 2D, everything uh, will be accessible at the tip of our client's finger. So, yeah, uh, however big plantation plot may be, durian, rubber tree, palm oil, doesn't matter anymore because you guys effectively have uh, digitalized the entire asset and uploaded it onto the platform for clients to monitor the asset list and uh, further analytical applications, operational management, so on and so forth. But moving forward, um, I, I, I hope uh, the idea has been effectively sent across. So for agriculture, well, smart uh, smart farming, precision farming, of course, in terms of GIS, you can add on to not just relying on images, 
uh, sensors, IoT sensors, right? Uh, that is also something, uh, uh, some wonderful application that can also be integrated on top of this, right? Um, IoT uh, sensors, let's say, uh, to monitor what? Parameters, uh, pH value, um, soil moisture, uh, ambient temperature, I guess. Uh, yeah, so the nutrients, um, NPK, right? So uh, nutrient, any nutrient deficiency can be uh, early detected and, uh, and the asset owner can intervene and do the necessary nutrient adjustment. So uh, avoid crop loss, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, everything um, displayed on a GIS uh, interface, right? That's uh, something really, really cool these days uh, that industry players, um, Ofo Tech, for example, is uh, offering clients. Uh, that will be for the agriculture plantation sector. Well, this is, of course, outdoor plantation. Um, there are others for green uh, in, indoor farming, uh, that, that uh, different topic on the side. So the next slide, property insurance. I guess um, I have uh, exceeded my time limit. I will sit back to Dr. Fabian. Thank you very much. I do apologize. Uh, thank you for the attention. I do apologize if there are any shortcomings. If I went too fast, there are some uh, things not clear. Uh, I, uh, I do apologize. Uh, and by the way, the everything I'm saying is being uh, recorded, right? And uh, there's a caption. Wow, <laughs> interesting. So thank you, Dr. Fabian. Pass it back to you. Thank, yeah, thank you. you very much, uh, Mr. Amshar, for a very interesting presentation. Actually, I have a very a lot of questions in my head. But uh, as for your information, uh, we're mixed of uh, most of our uh, com computer science students. So uh, and uh, some part of uh, the students we work in the geo AI lab. So uh, most of these students are actually from the key computer science. So maybe they're more familiar into computer vision, AR, VR, other than the geospatial technology itself. But for some students, uh, we specialize the our uh, research in geospatial. So like uh, your presentations, I actually very familiar with some of the students who works also with VR, AR, and those stuff. So thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Amshar, it's a very good presentation. So, uh, please, we are going to have the Q and A session at the end of our third speaker. If you still have a time to still be here with us, thank you very much, sir. Thank so, you. Thank you. Uh, yes. So, uh, I would like to move on to the second speaker, uh, Dr. Nurdin Ahmad. Uh, first of all, I would like to say assalamualaikum. Thank you very much uh, for uh, for uh, being here with us, sir. So, uh, Dr. Nurdin Ahmad is uh, one of those people who has all the mix in geospatial professions. He has over 35 years of exposure in technical, corporate, education, and government with proven abilities in guiding knowledge and technological development. So I uh, have several points to be noted about uh, Dr. Nudin Ahmad. So as a geospatial consultant, he has been involved with several national strategic projects, national physical plan and so on. So he led the National Space Agency for nine years. And uh, Dr. Nudin also served the geospatial community through professional institutions and asso associations, and also fellow of the Institution of Geospatial and Remote Sensing Malaysia, or IGRSM. He's currently still active as academic and lecturer and postgraduate supervisor in uh, geospatial technologies and innovations and serve as adjunct professor at University Putra Malaysia and University Kebangsaan Malaysia. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Nurin Ahmad, for the next 30, 45 minutes, the screen and time is yours, sir. Okay. Uh, just... Okay, uh, I hope everyone can see the screen. A very good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, very nice to have these sessions with all the uh, students as well, all the uh, technocrats in here. Uh, the topic uh, of this uh, seminar was uh, geospatial technologies for digital twin and green economics. So probably as a background, uh, I'll be uh, speaking a little bit about the uh, uh, the digital twin itself, the concept. Uh, possibly we, we can judge where we are now, and from there I'll move 
to the geospatial technologies for the digital twins. Right. Uh, <clears throat> okay, this is uh, basically the uh, uh, content of the uh, talks that I, I mean, that I'll be giving uh, in half an hour. So, uh, what is digital twin? And then what is geospatial? Uh, just for the technology for the twin, and possibly we see some applications. Okay. Uh, and then from there, we can see how, how it impacts us uh, and what, what should we know at the moment, especially being uh, uh, students and whether uh, how much it will impact our uh, future. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, what's digital twin? Uh, in short, uh, digital twin is a virtual replica. So that's why it's a twin of the real world entity. Which, uh, okay. which could be physical services or processes in digital form. So whatever you uh, have in the world, it can be twin in the digital world, All right? So possibly that's what you have seen. Uh, thank you for the uh, good examples given by the earlier speaker on what uh, can be seen on the ground, can also be formed in the digital way, All right? So, the only thing is that uh, uh, digital twin, uh, the technology that is uh, uh, helping us, is just that between the real world and the virtual world, there is a link. All right. So, and this link is, is real time. So, and that's where the AI come in, the machine learning come in. So, we'll, we'll see some of this uh, example after this. Okay. Now, I'm just taking an example of a city. Because uh, most of my work uh, uh, currently is on smart city. So I'll be giving uh, probably an example that possibly most of you will be familiar with, which is a smart city. If we see the component of a city, there are so many parts of city. Uh, there are transportation, uh, there are electricity, communication, internet, there are health services, public services, uh, and many more. So, uh, with this uh, form of cities, we, we have to make a twin of it, okay? So which means that, uh, you know, you, probably you have to divide it into, uh, so this is where the uh, 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 way of doing it. But to help to develop a holistic vision, city planners would do well to look at an individual component of a city. So uh, to form the digital twin, so for example, the physical building, we may have to form one virtual digital twin of the building. And then we have the electricity, another virtual uh, digital electricity power network, power, power uh, water distribution. So, so all of this have to be in virtual form. And after this, we are able to monitor not uh, or, or, or even predict the future of all the activities inside the city, how we do it. Basically, okay, just before that, uh, uh, digital twin is basically is part of the I, uh, fourth IR, okay? It's because in, in the fourth IR, basically, we are putting in all the, as highlighted earlier, all the uh, artificial intelligence, okay? All the big data, IoT, blockchain, whatever, uh, uh, intelligence into the current uh, processes that we will be utilizing in, uh, uh, for our benefits. Okay, so uh, just to end up the first part, uh, digital twin is basically is twinning the all the operation that we have on the real world into a digital form. Okay, so what we see is just the twinning part. Uh, I've, I've not shown or I've not demonstrated the, uh, uh, the processes yet. It's just at least we understand that, oh, which means that digital twin is basically nothing more than just your uh, twin, but in digital form. All right. So how does the twin form? It is, I, I know it's complicated. Uh, how, how to twin a city uh, and into uh, uh, several uh, components into the digital form. So it is okay if it's static, for example, building is static. But how are you going to uh, twin a river which is flowing, which is having a flood, which is having art? Uh, so this is the challenge of digital twin. 
All right. So that's the first part. So we got next part, of course, as the topic highlighted, geospatial technologies at least for those who are not familiar with geospatial, let, let me give a little bit of background of what's geospatial. All right. <clears throat> uh, uh, geo, uh, basically is the earth. As spatial is the, is, is the space. Okay, as spatial, from the word space because spatial. So it means geospatial is something related to space on the earth. Or in short, it's the location, location related information. Uh, uh, usually, uh, people in geospatial, they, 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 they mention all the technologies, either to confuse you or to show that they know about geospatial, or that is the technology that that's everybody should know. All right? Uh, GIS, GPS, remote sensing, web map, all these things are basically geospatial technologies. Okay? And what, as a human, uh, as a layman, what you want to know is where, what, how many. So all these technologies that we are mentioning should be able to give us the information. Where is, I don't know, uh, you will say, uh, uh, but this is a basic geospatial technology. When we come to digital twin, we find that this technology have to be incorporated with further technologies to ensure that it meets the digital twin. So in short, the technology that we have basically is positioning technology, mapping technology, spatial database. So these are all technologies that are related to geospatial. Now, why is geospatial important? Because 80% of our real life decisions are all geospatial data. It's, it's having all our, well, I would say all, but 80% of all the data that you have in this world are related to location. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about uh, 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 McDonald's, you're talking about uh, uh, clinics or something. Possibly you, you heard about so-called the uh, a joke uh, uh, that uh, circulated in, in the internet where someone was ordering the Pizza Hut, okay, or ordering a Domino's Pizza or whatever it is. When, when, when he orders, like even now, if you order, they already know who you are. Thank you, Mr. So-and-so, uh, uh, what you want? So when, when we order, they only know where we are. So that means they know where, where we live. The address is there. The phone number relates to the location. If you are using a handphone, the coordinates giving you the location. Okay? It can, it can be done that way. So when you order everything and you start to pay by card, they will say, oh, sorry, uh, the bank, uh, your, your account, not enough money, for example. So they know the, the information about your bank. Which bank? And how much is your money inside the bank? All right. So you say that, okay, I want to have a less sugar, uh, or, sorry, uh, uh, more coke or whatever. They say, oh, sorry, the records to your medical uh, showing that you have uh, diabetes. You shouldn't be taking more sugar. So all these things are linked together. But towards the end, what I think is that the records are all having location with it. Okay? That's one important thing. So when you say location, there are many ways of getting location, but these are just some of the common thing that is related to location. Either it's your address, your boundaries, your uh, name of the uh, of your uh, uh, land parcel, or whatever it is. So okay, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the a typical okay uh, uh, way of uh, uh, processing of geospatial information. All right, so which means that from the spatial data. Uh, which is based either your position, your elevation, or your land parcel. Okay, so it relates to whatever you have, environment, so, so forth, and so form. And from there, you see that uh, this is the part that possibly will be very important. Sorry, the 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 uh, the main uh, 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 important part is the analytics, modeling, and simulation. Okay, this is the Main part Guys, that numpang, it, ya, itu di group PD. Uh, sorry, PDF. Got to continue. Sorry. So, sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry. Some. Maybe you can continue. Oh, no. Okay, I can continue. Okay, sorry. Yes. I, I thought they said. Okay, thank you. Uh, the the analytics. Uh, I'll I'll highlight this. Uh, analytics modeling and simulation in, in later because in digital twin, this is important. Uh, why are, uh, I'm just writing earlier because, for example, if you have environmental data, example land use, how does uh, uh, um, agriculture people 
want to know uh, that this the soil is 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 deteriorating or is giving a better productivity uh, through digital twin. So the model is insert in the digital twin. For example, in the uh, in the uh, digital uh, environment, whereas on the land there could be some sensor. Uh, nowadays it's called IoT. <laughs> All right, there could be some sensor. Taking the, the 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 weather, taking the rainfall, taking the soil condition, and from there it have to model what type of soil is it now? Is it good for the plantation or not? So this is the modeling that is so important. So that's why digital tweet is for everybody. It's not just for a specific group of people. All right, uh, so uh, just to end up for the geospatial technology, so at least I hope you understand what geospatial technology. I'm just giving you an example about a, a simple example here, data about land. When you say data about a land, you are talking about location, you're talking about the topography, whether there's a hill, whether there's a lake, whether there's a forest, okay? And then use what, what, what the land is used for, whether there's any transportation that goes to the land, whether there's any electricity or gas. So this is about data about the land. So in order to get the information about this land, there are so many special technologies that can be deployed. Of course, you can go to the field survey. The survey can do a, a survey. Uh, you can use drones, UAVs to get information. Uh, you can fly. You can get from uh, satellite the images. Uh, so a few of the technologies I mentioned here, the purpose is to get information about the land. So this is basically just special technologies. Okay. So uh, uh, from there, then we we have to use see, we have to see how geospatial technology is going to use for digital twin. All right. So now we go to geospatial technology for digital twin, which is basically the topic of the day. Now, okay, let's start with the input. <clears throat> because why input? Because we have to know we have to first of all develop the twin. What we have now is the reality, ourselves, the buildings. Now we are going to develop the twins. How to develop the twins? We have to capture the data. So it's the input to your twins is your data of the real world. So this is where geospatial take a very important role, either using satellite imagery, either using, I mean, uh, uh, the same thing imagery, but it's from the aeroplanes, for example. Or nowadays, there are a lot of mobile mapping. They call it 360. If you've seen possibly in uh, Google View or <coughs> and, uh, uh, here, technologies and so many uh, companies are operating on it. Now you have the big data coming up with all the informations. Okay. And, and you also have all the information, existing vector data, and, and so many other technologies. Why are these? important because they are going to capture the information to develop the twin because now we don't have the digital twin yet or maybe we, we, if we have it's not complete so we have to use this once we have the twin which is basically the digital form next stage is how to process them <coughs> sorry <coughs> now this is where as i said just now uh, how uh, you've seen earlier uh, a road? What's important on the road? Whether there's any potholes, whether the road is old or new. Well, uh, uh, if we see with our eyes, it's okay. But if you want to develop a twin, what is a twin of an old road? What is a twin of a? Uh, um, uh, you've seen the example uh, of, of, of a cut hill. So there must be some element of AI, artificial intelligence, or element of uh, interpretations. Uh, so that's where machine learning, deep learning, uh, abstraction information. So these are all processes. So there are so many processes that, that can be involved in order to make the uh, twins, which is the digital information, intelligent, okay? Or having some knowledge. Otherwise, we have a twin, which is dumb. Why is dumb? Because we just make it a building, it's just a building without information. A river is just a river without uh, knowing whether there's a, a water flowing, whether there's any flood, whatsoever. So we have to do some processes in order to make it a little bit intelligent, in order to make our twin similar to us. All right? And 
Of course, the output can come be main things, all right? So it can be uh, 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 in, in hard copy, soft copy, uh, uh, management tools, and so many things. So these are all aspect of the digital twins, as I mentioned, into an application of Joe's partial into digital twin. So, and it's used for many things. Okay, you have seen a few. Uh, I, I will highlight here a few. For example, as I say, smart city, for example, we want to see <clears throat> uh, all the, all the uh, uh, operation in the cities are, are according to what we plan. For example, how are we going to optimize our parking, park, uh, parking lot? There are so many parking lots available, but people are still parking at the roadsides. Why? Because they don't know where are the parking lots. Okay. So how we make we, we are make with the, the twins such way that people know that ah oh, there's some some parking lot somewhere that I can go and, and such and such information. All right. So there are so many other uh, aspects. For example, just now uh, as construction, want to see what the latest development in the construction, how many percent has it goes up. So there must be a twin of the current development. So digitally we can see ah there's coming something is coming up and this is what the percentage of the building development. Okay, so the same thing as city planning, real estate, uh, and so many things that can be twin, so that you are very clearly looking at the digital form, but it is basically representing what's on the ground. So this is what the usage of digital twin. Uh, towards the end, we find that everything can be twin at the planning stage, at the design stage, construction, MS, all can be all aspect can be twin. So this is where sometimes when you read digital twin, they will say it's similar to smart city. Okay. This is, sometimes they will say that it's similar to artificial intelligence. Sometimes so it basically it is twinning the current progress on the earth. All right. So with that, I think uh, we will see some applications now. <clears throat> so let, let's see. Uh, one of the approach of which is the land administration. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, basically, there's so uh, many levels of, of uh, uh, when people say digital twin, basically, there are a few levels. The first level, as I mentioned, is the input where you have to collect the information, form the buildings. Okay, so the technology is which is usually being carried out in the uh, probably you have heard about GIS geoformation system, probably you have heard about BIM, okay, building information management, uh, or sorry, building information modeling, uh, CAD, of course, computer assisted drafting, image, so many technologies that involve in order to create the twins. So now you have the twins basically, which is these are all digital form of the earth. Now, that's the first level. When you, when you create the digital form, it's just level one. The second level is just that, how do you link between the real world and the twin? Linking between what's happening on the ground and the digital in your office. So in your office, what you see is the real thing, not because there's CCTV, <laughs> CCTV is okay, uh, but you cannot put all the CCTV uh, around, around the globe because it will be too expensive. As well as it's just, uh, you cannot see all, this, uh, all the screens. There will be millions of screens in front of you to see. Okay? So you may have to put, for example, uh, a certain gadget, a certain sensors uh, to get real-time differences between the situation on the ground and your twins and the digital, basically. So that's why that's where there's IoT uh, sensor, there are CCTV, there are possibly uh, uh, real-time uh, reports, monitoring. Why are we going to have this real-time monitoring? Because we want to see there's any changes, there's any things that is concerned to us. There's, there's something, for example, if we have these uh, buildings and there's a river beside it, and we have a sensor that monitor the level of the rivers, Suddenly we find that ah the water is rising, okay. So at least we there, there's a real time monitoring that the water is rising, and and the last part is the analysis 
prediction, AI, machine learning, optimization, to see, to predict that, oh, in one hour, the, the building will be covered. I see? So, and we can see the predictions on, this, on our twin. You don't have to go to the ground because the twin already predicted they're going to be uh, uh, a disaster that's coming up. So this is where data twin is going to be helping a lot in management of our uh, resources on the earth. Okay, uh, this is just uh, again, uh, I'm repeating uh, the same thing. As I said, to start with level one, we go to the site data and collect the information. All right, oh, this is, could be a, a summary of what we have, uh, example uh, uh, of, of what the, the steps that will be done just to have the, the digital twin, okay? From the uh, information, for the building information, infrastructure, everything, uh, mobility into our roads uh, or aeroplanes or whatever it is. And then we have the smart city, they call it. So smart city is just one step before the digital twin. Why smart city is that? Because in smart city, we are already modeling the operation of the city, modeling the operation of the earth. We model, okay? But digital twin will show the effect in the digital world. How does the building being submerged? How does the aeroplane timetable showing up and down in the digital twins? You don't have to go to the airport. We can see it at the digital twin. So this is where, as I'm informed, is going to be a very interesting future for you. Right, uh, just to show again, uh, in digital twins, uh, the building is called um, uh, LOD, basically, level of detail, okay? Because uh, it depends on how your, you want your twin to be. Do you want your twin to be generic? You want your twin to be beautiful, smart? So if you want to think you have to be uh, uh, like a box, it's called level of detail one, like this. If you think it's sufficient, okay, it's good. Okay, sometimes they want to be a little bit detailed, they call it level of detail two. More detail, level of detail three, of course, the maximum is four. Okay, so these are all something that you have to learn if you want to create the digital twin. Okay, <coughs> and <coughs> once you have the digital twin, you can do a lot of things, but as I emphasized earlier, you have to understand the process that's involved. For example, you are an environmental, uh, working in an environmental department, eh? department of uh, environment, and you want to monitor the effect of, I don't know, some uh, flooding or maybe pollutions or maybe uh, whatever aspect that disaster. Here is basically air quality. So you, in order for you to uh, uh, model, you have to understand how the air quality works between building. Uh, that's where the, 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 your, your intelligence uh, have to be put in. And from there, you have to put the sensor. From that sensor, you collect the data and then you model. So this is the end part of the transport. Well, from here, you can see all the aspects. So this is real time modeling of the air sensor in front, in, in, in Paris, for example, also air quality in Paris, okay? So where are the bad part? Where are the good part? Okay, so if, if, if at possibly at, at, in the morning, some areas are red because of pollutions. All right, so, okay, a few more minutes. Uh, I just, uh, uh, for those uh, uh, who like to see more application, possibly you can go to this, uh, uh, probably you can Google, this is, uh, uh, National Data Twin by UK, Great Britain. They have a, quite a thick uh, report on this and what they are doing uh, and what their application, very interesting. Uh, some of the application on Data Twin uh, for, for underground mapping, uh, which means that they're trying to monitor what's, what's going on underground with all the uh, utilities. And then they go for crime and so many things on the Data Twin, all right? So they can even predict crime. What time are the, the, the burglars uh, or the, the people that's going to uh, come into your house and they, they predict all this exercise on the digital twin. That's interesting. 
All right, so th this is the report that put to the in the UK, okay? Uh, uh, okay, because the topic is also green economy, basically it's related, okay? Except for the, uh, uh, when you say green economy, is uh, uh, an economy that's based on low carbon, uh, uh, low, uh, less uh, pollution, better energy. So basically, uh, in, in Europe, this is, have been, uh, uh, been put as a digital transformation, uh, the digital twin. You see, digital twin is one of the digital transformation of green economy. All right, so how to use uh, in agriculture, basically application in agriculture, not only culture, but also in other aspects. Uh, even like uh, transportation, they try to minimize the uh, carbon dioxide. So that's considered as green economy. All right. So uh, with the use of uh, electric, electrical car. So these are all the aspects that uh, is inclusive of digital twin. All right. Uh, okay. I'll, I think uh, I'll, I'll just go to the last part since uh, I hope I, I, I'm on time. So this is uh, again another uh, report which I hope you can uh, download as well. Uh, it, it's called Spatial Digital Twins. This one is Digital Twins, but specifically focused on geospatial as the topic today. Okay, so in there, you can see there are so many, uh, I think I can remember how many pages of it, about 30 to 50 pages, uh, but I, I'm just getting the, uh, the three findings, three main findings. First of all, all advanced digital twin use cases relax, which means that most digital twin that we are having on the earth now uses spatial data. That means geospatial technology is so important for you to know. I know that you are all IT background. So with this report, it shows that you have to have some knowledge of geospatial technology, geospatial data. Okay. So, and then spatial data captures visited by geospatial industry can enable in improve visualization. So which means if you have a digital twin, you have your twin, please utilize geospatial data in order to have a better visualization. You have a better output that you want to have, all right? And third, as geospatial data is fundamental to unlocking more applications. So with, more, with geospatial data, we can have more application of digital twin for us to explore. So with that, I thanks for your attention. Sorry. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nudi, uh, for your presentation. So, it's, uh, so uh, for the students and uh, the participants who have question to Dr. Nurin, please you can uh, send through the chat or uh, you can raise your hand during the Q&A sessions. Again, thank you very much, Dr. Nurin, for a very comprehensive presentation. Oh, you're welcome. So for us who uh, doesn't really know what digital twin, you really explained it very well to us. <laughs> so we, computer scientists, uh, start now to to dealing with more spatial data. Yes. <laughs> so yes, right. so we cannot avoid that in yeah. the sense of uh, that that the data streaming that we're facing now. Uh, although we don't want to be involved with your spatial data, at the end of the day, we will face the fact that we will be, uh, yes, we'll be right. working with a special yes, data yes. at the end of the yes, day. That's the message, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Doctor. So uh, I would like to move on uh, to our third speaker. Uh, okay, uh, so we move on to our third speaker, Mr. Dirga Sumantri. So he's the... Uh, CEO of uh, Braga Technologies, a company uh, originated in Bandung, Indonesia. So uh, as the CEO, he also uh, being a co-founder of the Geospatial Creative Institute, which is an initiative community gather professional, academic, and stakeholders with the same interest in geospatial technologies. And uh, he finished his Bachelor studies in Institute Technology Bandung as a geodesy and geomatic en engineers, and also finished his master in uh, Fritz University um, Amsterdam, VU um, Amsterdam, uh, as master of science in the spatial transport, regional environmental and economics. Uh, without further ado, I would like to give the uh, screen and time to Mr. Dirga Sumantri, please. Mr. Dirga. Uh, 
Thank you, Dr. Fabian. Uh, let me share my screen first. Uh, do you guys able to see my screen? Uh, yes, Mr. Degas, very clear. There's a time and screen okay. is yours. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Dirga from Braga Technologies, and it's an honor for me to join this webinar today. Uh, now I would like to present about our companies, Braga Technologies, and how we can leverage our products into several cases to contribute on current trending sectors such as digital twin and digital economics. Uh, we have our motto, which is answering how by understanding where. So uh, Braga Technologies, uh, registered as uh, PT Braga Technology Nusantara, is the information technology uh, which focus on location-based service technology. We started in 2019, uh, two years after I graduated from my bachelor degree. Uh, I was a student assistant back then at the university and worked on data collection as my side project. Afterwards, uh, we got a bigger scoop project and then we decided to create a legal entity. Until now, we are currently have uh, 35 employees and 70 people on board. Uh, our uh, headquarter is located in Bandung. And we plan to uh, put satellite office, office in Jakarta on the next year. So uh, we have uh, our main business. Uh, the first one is the data service. Uh, we conduct data collection, data moderation, data annotation. We also conduct uh, data crawling from various websites such as uh, Twitter and government websites. And we build as a geospatial data deliverable. And our second product is uh, WebGIS development. We call it a geo dashboard, and there are several features inside. So I will talk about it later. So as a startup, uh, we need a recognition. So we join several competitions such as Hackathon Incubator. Uh, we have uh, we join a Future City Hackathon by Jakarta Smart City, and then Hackfest Hackathon by Google and Synergy Accelerator uh, by BCA Group. And we work on uh, our clients and not li limited on a few sectors. Uh, we work for several ministries such as Cominfo, uh, BIG, and then Indonesian Army. And we work also for state and local government. And we also work for private sector. The first one, is, the latest project is Goto. We help them to improve uh, their data accuracy for uh, improve their uh, routing service. And back to our first uh, service, we collect data is a point of interest. Uh, if you guys uh, use the Gojek uh, to go to your uh, university, you will put Binus University. So we provide those kind of data and then we maintain. So we keep it updating and uh, it's quite different model rather than the uh, Google Maps. When they use uh, Google Street View, we use a, a community to collect the data. So we have around 2,000 uh, community in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. And we already gather about uh, 3 million point of interest data and then point address data and uh, with several categories. So we have like uh, more than 100 categories. For example, we have uh, restaurant categories and then convenience source and etc. So uh, now in Indonesia we have a community uh, that spread in more than 200 cities in Indonesia. We have also community in Malaysia and Thailand. So the second product is uh, Geo Dashboard. Uh, Geo Dashboard is a map dashboard that capable to visualize, analyze, and integrate the data which can be accessed online through digital platform. Uh, as, a bootstrap, as a bootstrap startup, uh, we have very limited resource. So instead of we build the product then sell it, we start as a software house. We gain some uh, pain point from clients and after more than uh, 25 clients, we decide to build the product and uh, it's called Geo Dashboard. And, uh, then we develop it as a software as a service. And uh, I will talk about several cases which related with uh, grid economics and uh, digital twin letter. 
So uh, we develop a geo dashboard with three main features. The first one is data visualization, of course. Uh, we try to able to uh, visualize many types of data such as uh, SHP and then CSV and also we try to uh, provide 3D data such as uh, GeoTIFF and then LAST and we also to gather uh, data as much as possible because uh, the client have like many types of data with uh, various uh, software so we try uh, to make it uh, simpler with uh, those kind of uh, data uh, data type and the second one uh, we also conduct the spatial analysis uh, like a multi site analysis then buffer and then a root finder and we develop with uh, more than 50 analysis and the third one uh, last but not least uh, we want to integrate uh, this platform into big data uh, database and then I, internet of things so uh, it's not limited with the static data because uh, now uh, with the uh, the fast uh, data transaction we want to able all this data in real time so we have uh, several cases uh, sector such as mining agriculture and then real uh, retail and real estate and uh, etc so i will now focus on uh, our experience uh, which related with the uh, digital twin or oh, before that uh, i want to share about the business process so as uh, i know you are mostly from the uh, it background so it's uh, quite simple we have a data input from various uh, sensor and then we put on the uh, database and we visualize this on maps. And nowadays, uh, we we want to uh, make a zero uh, zero. We want to make it as a, a no downtime. So we implement it on the cloud, which can be uh, uh, leverage uh, with uh, several uh, uh, several uh, service. So. Uh, rather using one uh, backend service, uh, we can uh, easily uh, escalate into a few uh, service. Uh, but uh, in several cases, like the government, they also need a uh, on-premise uh, database. So we also provide it as an on-premise database. And as the end result, uh, we also provide uh, this data on the web GIS and then the mobile apps and also uh, sometimes uh, we provide it as the print maps but it's a very rare case so uh, uh, in the term of a uh, digital twin uh, from the AWS version is a virtual model of a physical object so basically as long it represents something in digital, uh, I think it's called. It, it can be as a digital twin. For example, the location of your house. Uh, maybe the uh, Dr. Nordin says about the level of detail. So uh, they will have a um, type of level of details. But uh, with the uh, with the current technology, the most important part of the digital twin is how we deliver the data as uh, real time as possible. Uh, we have a several case. For example, this is the from the sim, uh, the most simple is the we provide a static data uh, which is called uh, system information pulau for the badan informasi geospatial. So maybe in the past they will see as a print maps, and now they can uh, see as a digital maps. So they will cut their uh, time when they want to see the database about the uh, islands in Indonesia. You can also access at cipulau.bg.go.id. Uh, and the second one, we also help the Ministry of Communication and Informat Information to provide the telco tower distribution. So in this product, uh, we want to observe the data quality so uh, it might be helpful for them to decide uh, which area they want to invest for the uh, tower and increase their uh, service. 
Also, the most interesting part uh, from the geospatial uh, technologies, uh, we can also implement for the uh, pemilu, uh, for the election. Uh, back then in 2020, uh, we help uh, one of the candidate to collect the real count. So it takes like around 12 hours to collect 50% uh, of the data which is faster than they collect uh, without this uh, uh, platform. And uh, for uh, this uh, platform, we also uh, can observe the heat map from, from each participant. So we can understand where is the most uh, region uh, when the participant uh, wins and the other uh, region where the participant uh, lost. Also, um, for the sake of uh, cost cutting, we also provide like uh, an asset management. Uh, they want to uh, maintain. So, so the, the purpose of uh, business optimization is uh, minimize expenditure and maximize uh, their uh, utility. So basically, they want to minimize the expenditure uh, instead of uh, not under not uh, they don't. The first one they do, they put it on the paper, so they don't really know exactly where the assets, and then uh, they decide to digitize it, and then they want to distribute, and from from then. Uh, they can also uh, uh, act, uh, optimize the movement of surveyor to maintain their assets. So if uh, you guys um, maybe learn about a traveling salesman program, uh, traveling salesman problem. So I think uh, the geospatial is the sure is the the application the real application for uh, those problems. And today, uh, I on, for the and IOT integration, we also help the army to uh, monitor their uh, vessel. So back then, they only uh, rely on their radio signal, and with the help of uh, GPS with satellite communication, they are able to uh, monitor in real time where the exact location from for their vessels. So also we integrate with several uh, data such as AIS is the uh, data from the vessel to prevent collision. And then uh, we integrate it with the uh, ERP products so they can manage their goods and equipment uh, which are uh, carried by those vessels. And we also implement this uh, geo dashboard with uh, computer vision analytics. So it's basically uh, we just uh, visualize the data from the uh, CCTV uh, uh, equipped by the uh, face recognition and then uh, car recognition, uh, vehicle counting. And we try to visualize it as a, a uh, data heat, heat map data and uh, probably uh, in the future uh, we can use as uh, real time analytics for uh, visitor improvement or uh, traffic improvement because uh, this technology now uh, has not been uh, really implemented uh, with their maximum potential. So uh, the other uh, technology that we uh, develop is indoor positioning system. We provide it uh, uh, as a, a device, a small device. It's uh, like uh, two centimeters diameter. And uh, we want to gather the information the, of the movement from uh, people who uh, move around the building. So the the most the most of interesting part from this uh, products 
when it's like a similar uh, with uh, the GPS technology, but we put inside the building. So like we we put the uh, log, we put the receiver uh, from the each uh, room, and then they send the data directly from the uh, uh, ping from the pin, then uh, send it to the, the dashboard directly. Also, uh, we, we try to uh, visualize the LIDAR data uh, because uh, with uh, the uh, uh, the basic the basic uh, the basic uh, problem with the LIDAR data is uh, the huge amount of size. So we want to try to visualize it as a web. So the the challenge is how we can. Uh, visualize with uh, tiling processing so it will uh, decrease the uh, the they will, it will increase the performance of uh, data visualization and uh, the second part is about the green economics uh, i take the same uh, definition uh, with uh, dr nurdin so as long we want to lower the carbon and then we want to uh, make the resource efficient, efficient, and then uh, we can uh, use this uh, analogy to implement the green economics. So the 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 simplest the simplest uh, implementation is network analysis coverage. In this case, uh, the local government, the tax authority, uh, where they collect a tax from vehicle, uh, they have. They want to observe uh, which area with the with the minimum uh, income uh, from the from that, and then uh, they will put like a mobile a mobile payment system. So like it's a, a vehicle, uh, they they can like us uh, we know like a sim clearing, and then uh, they will decide it based on the based on the. Uh, uh, income projection so uh, they will not put the car on the uh, on the higher uh, in higher uh, income but they will put like maybe uh, around uh, around the uh, suburban area where uh, it's very far to reach the uh, to reach the uh, payment place for example and we can uh, we this feature is uh, it's really useful because uh, they uh, they decide the blind spot area and then uh, afterwards they uh, put uh, they increase the revenue from uh, the from the not collected uh, tax before. And also, we implement the GIS monitoring for uh, forest park management. We implement it in Tahura Dago to the uh, the the interesting part. Uh, they want to monitor the zone, so they have like a, a, a restrictive zone, and then the zone where they can uh, put the uh, other plantation, and then. Uh, they can do a uh, monitoring asset and then uh, they can uh, monitor the uh, buffer area so um, uh, in this case uh, it's uh, our effort to maintain the uh, carbon so uh, they they uh, they also uh, minimize their expenditure for gas for example so with this uh, monitoring and also on the hotel sector now uh, we also involve on carbon watch uh, if you know like uh, many uh, companies now sell the carbon credit to european uh, companies uh, they they have uh, 
uh, uh, area in Kalimantan and they want to analyze the the uh, output from uh, types of forest per hectare so we try to make a calculation and then uh, with the satellite imagery uh, we can decide uh, what kind of uh, land cover and then we can calculate it uh, the amount of, of carbon uh, more accurately and uh, that's uh, from me if you have any question please let me know thank you Okay, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Diga Sumantri, for a very interesting presentation. So uh, maybe, uh, everyone, before we move on to the uh, Q&A sessions, uh, I would like to invite everyone for a group photos first, in case uh, during the Q&A sessions, uh, any of you want to leave the uh, session. So I'd like to invite you to open your cam uh and highlighted the speakers in the middle so we can have a group pictures uh we have students like lecturers professors also and then some from the industry and a government both indonesia and malaysia so please uh, join us for a for a group photo sessions before we move on to the q a sessions so for those who has questions uh, waiting for everyone to turn on their cameras. Uh, for those who have questions, you can simply put in the chat or during the q and session, you can raise your hands. If you have a question to Dr. Nurdin, Mr. Dirga, or uh, also for uh, Mr. Amsyar. So maybe uh, Ms. Ajeng or uh, Mr. Abram yes. can help me to take a picture. Uh, okay, I will help for the uh, group photo session. Yes. Um, okay, all participants has already turned on the camera. Uh, from the first page, I will take a uh, one, two, three. Then for the second page, one, two, three. And then the next. Okay, uh, for all the turn on camera, I've already take the picture, uh, Mr. Fabian. Yes. Okay, uh, so the presentation is uh, is uh, done, Miss Ajam. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, let please allow me to share my screen because uh, it's basically uh, some questions from. Uh, let me share my screen here uh, just for a moment. So here, right? Okay. So as usual, uh, I prefer to give uh, the questions in the list. So uh, so we can start the Q and session in a while. Just give me a moment to. My screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I shared the wrong uh, screen. I'm sorry. Uh, check. Uh,
uh, check. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm somehow getting locked off from the Zoom. So uh, is my voice clear now? I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Nordin and Mr. Diga. Okay. Uh, please allow me to share my screen. Uh, okay. So um, I usually customize to put the question list here. And if uh, anyone has questions, uh, they can put it here. So this is a question uh, based on the, our colleagues or uh, my own uh, curiosity regarding the topics. So maybe uh, we can discuss uh, some of the questions, some of some of the questions maybe uh, belong to or ask to, to any speakers or some of some of it maybe address uh, for for everyone so maybe this first question is for for everyone especially doc, dr nurdin so what is your thought on digital twins let's say scope potential or needs in the current industries can 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 be industries or let's say governments is it still okay with the with the current 3d visualization plus annotations either using machine learning and so on or manual or is it must be extended for the simulation so is it going through L2 and L3? So is it L1 still okay for maybe two years ahead? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the, as I said, the concept of digital twin is when there is a, a real time visualizations. Uh, what we are having now is we develop uh, <clears throat> a model uh, and we only, uh, I call it model, which is the, basically the digital model, basically. And from there, we just analyze the model. There is no real time linkage to the real world. So uh, the potential is, I would say that it is just one step above what we are doing now. What, what we are doing now is just that we are having everything is, I, I, I call it static. Static means, we just mod put in uh, uh, the real world. Basically, if we want to model about electricity, we digitize or we convert the diagrams, everything into the uh, software. And from there, we simulate the software, for example. It, it may be similar to what's outside, or it may not be similar to what's happening on the ground. But if you have a linkage, basically the IoT or the real-time monitoring, then we find that Whatever we simulate, our, uh, our, if it's the only for the future, but the current existing uh, process is being monitored. Hence, anything about the uh, current industries, we are already have got the basic of it, which is basically we already got most of it is in digital form. Most of it is already uh, converted from the real world into digital form. The only thing that we have to move now is to link between the real world and the digital form in such a way that it forms a twin. So now it's, 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 it's a twin, but a twin that doesn't speak to each other. <laughs> so, uh, so that's how I say that uh, 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 the potential is so huge. Uh, and, uh, and, and the missing link is just not, not so much. So that, that's, that's how I look at it. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, and that's why I asked about the simulation of cases through modeling. Yeah. Because that's what, uh, where the modelers or the computer scientists are doing very hard uh, work on that. Like yes. creating 3D models, the geodesies can yes. do that easily. Yes. But then how we do the modeling is, is other story. <laughs> it's other thing. So, yeah. So, with, even with S3 tech, technologies, ArcGIS or the development modeling, Yes. It's, it's still it's still very hard to do a real yes it's real very hard to do. yeah right. agreed agreed yeah so uh it becomes uh maybe the more suitable questions oh uh, first of all uh mr dirga do you have any thought on this about digital twins because uh most of your company serves the geo geo database and so on so how real time is the current industry needs like let's say update it every hour uh, that's enough for a spatial data or maybe one one data per month is okay um maybe i think i can say like for the uh, building information system they can they can 
updating every two weeks because uh, they will depends on the progress for uh, each sectors and for other sectors maybe for the uh, plan i think it's it can take a longer time because uh, it it will depends on uh, how fast the progress itself okay thank you very much uh, is mr i'm sure still with us uh, Ms. Ajeng, or uh, he already left the, the seminar? Oh, yes, okay. Because I didn't see you point, uh, highlight it, sir. Okay, cool. So, uh, maybe the second question is uh, more into for Mr. Amshar, because you, you work very much on the AI and machine learning dev development in your projects. So, can you please, uh, how, can you please elaborate to us uh, because the MI, the, the AI or machine learning, uh, is it helps? How much it helps the effectivity of projects? Because we we already know that we need to create the models. We create to make a very good models, uh, which creating the model is also time con consuming. So how how do you compare between the time making the models, and we do it the manual labor? So how effective the AI M and M ML works? Uh, uh, if the AI, uh, artificial intelligence and ML machine learning. Uh, yes, thank you for yeah. the question. Uh, it's a very good question, by the way. Uh, as uh, our fellow audience could see previously during the presentation, our um, AI application uh, was used for um, road asset management. Um, I take note, uh, definitely to create a model, uh, definitely uh, requires a lot of um, data set, uh, which in itself is very time consuming. Uh, nevertheless, uh, ML, machine learning, uh, ING, refers to a continuous process. So you don't have to develop a 100% or 99.9% .9 accuracy uh, model before you can actually launch the system. In fact, if I can give you an example for our client here uh, in Malaysia, uh, they require about 20 people to annotate road assets, for example, guardrail, um, LED, uh, um, LED lamps, uh, signboard, um, feather pillar. It, it requires a lot of time in itself. But with AI, you can run up to 24-7, uh, 24 hours a day, seven weeks, all year round. Uh, so what manual approach takes two to three weeks, AI can actually execute in only a few hours. So ultimately, I, I believe uh, it is definitely worth uh, the effort in order to uh, develop a robust uh, AI system. Uh, but of course, AI needs to be there needs to be a niche. You can't um, start off with uh, many things together. That's where a lot of people confuse AI uh, in being able to um, automate nearly every processes. Uh, so I hope it answers the questions. Yes, of course. Maybe some uh, maybe what's known to our students maybe the local model and the global model. Like it's it's a most impossible and very hard to create a global model. You have to create a model can apply for for everything. Maybe the model that your company creates can only be applied in the yeah. let's say in Malaysia, but it cannot be applied in Indonesia or other countries. That's so that's, definitely that's definitely yeah. definitely the case. Yeah. Although I would like to add, um, uh, in Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, it's much better of the accuracy. It's closer than Malaysia to Mexico, for example. That definitely uh, I agree with you. Uh, then then that requires a continuous um, collection of data, definitely. Uh, Dr. Nurdin, maybe do you have any thought on this? Like, uh, maybe I, theoret I, theoretically speaking, is it, <laughs> is, it, is it worth to... Yeah, yeah of course, as I said, it, it is, it is uh, a part of the uh, IR 4.0, uh, which is, uh, it is going to utilize all the uh, data available for either for machine learning and towards them we build our artificial intelligence uh, because in, in future most of it will be digital managed, digitally managed as compared to now is labor intensive so I think the, the, the uh, effectiveness of, of AI ML, ML is, is, is shouldn't be denied it is going to be one of the major things that's going to be uh, in, in, in the very near future that everybody should uh, be involved I was supposed to help out the uh, management of, of whatever uh, sort of uh, engagement that we have. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Maybe a third question. I'm not sure we have 
maybe we have 15 to 20 minutes time for discussion. Yeah, so uh, the third question may be more focused on um, Mr. Lirga or Mr. Amsha. Can you please elaborate how the cloud and web tech technologies help the effectivity of your projects? Because most of your projects related with cloud, uh, cloud processing, cloud computing, and also uh, web tech technologies. So compared to the desktop processing that we, the geospatial people usually work with ArcGIS uh, and so on, so forth. Uh, is it the desktop processing? Uh, it's currently outdated, or they can both exist together in a way. Maybe Mr. Dirga or Mr. Amshar have a thought on this. Okay, uh, for me, uh, the first one is the uh, uh, cost effective because uh, we don't need to invest the huge amount of uh, server, for example, and then uh, we the uh, we can. Uh, use with a specific amount of time. So like we only need for a week. So we only uh, pay for a week and uh, we can, uh, we don't pay afterwards. And the second uh, advantage is the auto scale uh, technologies where uh, we don't rely only on a computer, but we can rely on several computers. Uh, which can really helpful to process the big data and uh, we can uh, provide it uh, faster than before. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Sorry to go. Maybe Mr. Ramshar, do you have a thought on this? Because sure. we know there is a, there's a limit where a cloud processing can do compared to a very expensive desktop processing. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, but uh, just to pick up from uh, Mr. Dirga, uh, cost definitely is a big factor. Uh, not the need for everyone to um, have a proper workstation, um, processing power, so on and so forth. So when we talk about cloud processing, um, we, of course, it refers for us SaaS, um, a software as a service, SaaS processing, uh, B2B. So effectively, anyone can just... Uh, include all applications on as one centralized database or SSOT, a single source of truth. Um, furthermore, uh, we can also have it accessible via web or mobile. So that's something uh, that can be included. Uh, for, a, for a product, uh, we can actually easily scale uh, if it's cloud. Effectively, anyone can uh, log online and actually access uh, the product or system. Uh, but as you've mentioned, there are certain limitations in terms of processing capabilities uh, for cloud, but doesn't have to be one or the other. I believe both can coexist. Um, some data can be processed locally by the user, then uploaded to the cloud. Um, it doesn't have to be fully cloud, or it can be fully uh, cloud-based. Um, that would be from my end, yeah. Mm. yeah. Because from your presentation, I saw that you work a lot of with drone making 3D models and a surface from the drones with the image stitching and so on. I'm not sure if uh, with lots of data, the cloud processing can do that already, but with the desktop processing, it's very doable, but then, then you cannot up upload that to the cloud. Definitely. Yeah. So, 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 so in your case, maybe coexist together in for most of the cases. That's okay. true. Yeah. Uh, let us move on to the fourth questions. Uh, this is maybe again for Mr. Dirga and Mr. Amshar. Uh, what is the percentage of the multidisciplinary in involvement? Because we know that uh, in a geospatial uh, in geospatial project, uh, there's not going to be only, let's say, a computer scientist, not going to be geospatial analyst. There are going to be lots of people working together. So can you please uh elaborate to us a little bit if you wouldn't mind uh what's the per percentage of the involvement from each subjects for example 20 percent of your team is architect or computer scientists planners and so on if you wouldn't mind to share with us uh in in our company uh, we we no longer observe their bachelor background because uh, we have a full stack developer developer Uh, from petroleum engineer, uh, from agriculture uh, science, uh, the most important thing for us, uh, their ability to adapt, and the key to adapt is their ability to learn. So as long as they are a fast learner, uh, they can adapt with uh, current technologies. So 
uh, in our company it's very broad uh, from the uh, scientist engineering and social uh, science thank you so i'm sure you have any thought on this regarding to ovotech in general sure i uh... Again, like Mr. Dirga, I believe you mentioned about 35 people strong. Our company also somewhere around, along 40 people. I would say about uh, similarly, uh, like Mr. Dirga, we have a combination of skill sets and talents. I would put it around 20% computer programming, full stack development, of course, and another 20% for engineering. Uh, this constitutes electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, mechatronics, and also another 20% of the geometrics um, surveyors or geospatial uh, related and the other 20 percent uh, 10 percent management and 10 percent others uh, that would be the bulk or the what would comprise our company uh, workforce okay good thank you very much maybe uh, it's the same question for doc dr nurdin maybe you have observed for years dr. Nurdin, in the oh, okay. uh... industry is this is this again like we computer scientists starting to learn about the geospatial data. So is the multidisciplinary, it's going to okay. be like a melting pot of, of lots of things. In, uh, uh, to, to tell the truth, uh, uh, we have problems of uh, recruiting computer scientists at the moment. They don't like maps. Uh, <laughs> uh, they don't understand maps. So uh, the learning curve, uh, uh, of course, there are a few universities that started to teach uh, uh, the subjects, your specials, uh, uh, I, I don't deny that. Uh, for example, we still have about five to ten vacancies now in our company on the computer scientists. They just come and go because because they don't understand, they don't like your special very much. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but uh, my companies basically are more on the uh, your special. Uh, uh, so that's why we have more uh, towards your special uh, people, uh, your special background but we uh, as highlighted we we are also doing a lot of uh, system development uh, for the smart city uh, and and uh, also uh, other aspects of uh, because uh, it, this is uh, depend on on the uh, uh, objective or where is your your main market okay so of course our main market is still in the uh, planning as well as in the uh, you call it resource management so uh, the, the main uh, bulk is still on the geospatial background. But how when I say geospatial, it, it is also involved environmental with people with environmental or geologies or, you know, there's a resource management uh, background. But uh, the main part is that they have to know computer science. <laughs> and that's, that's the, the lacking part uh, that, that I think now universities have tried to uh, have both where computer science become quite a major part in many syllabus. At the same time, uh, for the computer scientists, uh, geospatial is becoming certain percentage of their studies. So that, that's how uh, I, I see it. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Nurdin, because it's very hard to, to give understanding Let's say about coordinate system. Like, yes, you're what's right. What's WGS? <laughs> what is what is what is the WGS? Nineteen eighty four, and then how we use ellipsoid? How we use, and that takes one semester already. <laughs> so it takes some time. So, okay, so uh, okay, so uh, there is another questions uh, specified for Mr. Dirka. There are two questions. Maybe you can answer it at once if you don't mind. So how can your company provide an ac accurate data for for your let's say customer? Or government, or the, and then uh, can we know what method of the company used to do the geo analysis? Maybe it's related to in general what kinds of geo analysis is your company doing? And the third one is how you see the projection of uh, geospatial technologies in Indonesia, and how you unlock that upper opportunity. So maybe three questions for you, Mr. Dirgev, like would like to elaborate for us. Uh, so for from for our data collection specifically for point of interest, uh, we build the mobile apps uh, which collect which collect the uh, GPS phone data and then we use uh, geofencing features to prevent the uh, data fraud. The first one from the collector itself, so we prevent the, the fraud and then. Uh, 
afterwards we uh, validate the data so we check uh, the, the the geometry accuracy and then the nominal accuracy uh, with uh, the uh, validation team so uh, we always provide uh, the most accurate because it it is from the field collection and we with the tools that we use uh, uh, such as the uh, geofencing uh, it really help us to prevent the uh, uh, bad data results and uh, the geoanalysis it's it's really depends uh, for the uh, case study but uh, what um, I am working now uh, we use a hedonic pricing technique to uh, to simulate the uh, house pricing so we collect the data from the uh, uh, using data crawling from the internet, such as uh, property providers, and then we uh, put the uh, regression on that, and we 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 predict the uh, the house near the uh, available price. So uh, in this case, uh, we use. Uh, those technique and we can implement many techniques and geoanalysis for uh, other uh, case and uh, how i see the projection of geospatial technology uh, for example in the government sector itself they have a 33 37 province and they have uh, more, more than around 500 cities and uh, each cities they have the uh, uh, around 30 dinas or uh, sub uh, uh, cities uh, government. So uh, I calculate uh, it's it's really huge uh, number of entity in Indonesia, and they uh, they have a budget uh, for uh, increase their service. So I think it's a really huge market, and uh, you can start from now as a student to. Uh, try to your uh, to try to solve the problem maybe from your uh, kampung halaman and then uh, from your city and uh, what they don't have and what you observe and how you can uh, leverage uh, the problems into solution with uh, your technology that's for me that's from me thank you all right thank you very much Mr. Birga. so maybe uh, since you 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 mentioned the students should start with learning on something. Maybe uh, this is a question for for Dr. Nurdin, well, Mr. Dirga, and also uh, Mr. Amshar. Maybe for all the speakers. Maybe this is the final questions. I personally really want to ask the fourth one, but I don't know. I don't think the time is uh, enough. So, uh, any software or or language or any kind of knowledge that uh, you might want to disclose to us in computer science related to the current developing geo AI or machine learning system that student can can have the overview on the new technologies are using in the current geospatial industry because we 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 might familiar with ASRI we might familiar with uh, some of the machine learning using python and so on but uh, is there anything that we might need to learn for sure uh, for the upcoming years in this industry. So uh, maybe this is a question for everyone as also for the closing remarks for, for this session. Uh, uh, please, for all the speakers. Let me try uh, first. Uh, I'm not going to be specific on any language because the main thing is that uh, most of the uh, software, whether you're talking about GIS software, remote sensing software, they have this uh, 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 a language that you have can develop from there. I mean, there's whatever inbuilt language that they have, and you can uh, uh, link to the main software because you're not going to build your own uh, uh, software altogether. Uh, it's just that the, the, the AI, also the machine learning part, is just a component of the, 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 the software. So uh, whatever uh, capacities that the software have, if you if you're using GIS, usually they have a macro language, they have a programming language that, that you can you can link to it. As you said, 
If it's Python, it's Python. If it's basic, basic, it's C plus plus, it's C plus plus. That is not the the critical part. The critical part is for you to understand how machine learning uh, take place for Joe's partial. Uh, uh, so the language is is just a tool uh, to 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 build that. So the modeling part is the most difficult part, uh, as as highlighted. How how to make it uh, able to learn the the process? I think the language is uh, the secondary to me. Uh, that's that's my point of view. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nurdin. Uh, maybe Mr. Dirga have a thought on this based on your experience with Braga Tech or as a yeah. remark also from you? Uh, I, I agree with Mr. Nurdin. It's the, the most important is how we understand the problems mm. and the language itself. I think uh, I recommend to uh, find on Google the most popular uh, uh, programming language, language because uh, it helps you to catch up with the latest technology and what uh, they learn from uh, the companies. So, uh, for example, maybe in the startups now, they are really familiar with uh, React uh, JavaScript for uh, the de development, and then uh, they have uh, they, they're really familiar with uh, Flutter. For example, but uh, the most important, uh, as uh, Dr. Nurdin said earlier, uh, you should understand, and then you should know the the real problem, the pain point, and what uh, you want to solve. That's the most interest. Uh, the most that's the the most important part from learning something. That's from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dirga, and uh, maybe Mr. Amshar. You have a thought on this based on experience with your company? Uh, again, I uh, agree with Dr. Nordin, uh, Mr. Dirga. But uh, just to add one more, I uh, advise the students um, how we started. We went to open source. I'll never underestimate open source. So uh, that would be a really, really good start. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. That'd be it. So, so thank you very much. So to conclude, everyone, we have a very good session, uh, very, very, very broad. Uh, Questions. I uh, I personally believe all the students. The uh, we have the governments also here. We have the industries also here, and the like like lecturers also. We can we can have lots of take ons uh, from today's dis discussions. So uh, maybe some points I can gather from all the speakers is a problem solving. So what so what we really we really need to work first is problem solving. So in research, you make a really good really good research questions and your research will be quite smoother than if you if you go first with what kind of language you want, what kind of software, what kinds of uh, data you want to use. So so be mindful uh, for students with with how you you solve a problem. So your problem solving, your your adaptability to any kinds of new technologies would help you very much with your journey of, of learning. So uh, to close this session, I would like to say thank you very much uh, for Dr. Nurdin, for Mr. Dirga, and for Mr. Amshar. It's very, uh, very good opportunity for me also to gain knowledge from from everyone here. So hopefully, and I believe this uh, knowledge will be useful for for everyone and fruitful also for the students. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, close the sessions and I will give it back to Ms. Ajeng. Thank you very much, everyone, Dr. Nordin, Mr. Dirga, and also Mr. Amshar. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Amshar, Dr. Nordin, and Dr. Dirga, eh, Mr. Digra for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. And also thank you, Dr. Fabian, for being our moderator. We come to the end of the session. Thank you all for participating in our international seminar geospatial technologies for digital twin and green economies. See you all on our next events. Don't forget to fill out the attendance form. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Nordin, Mr. Diga, and Mr. Amshar, and everyone who's joining. We have 400 and 10 participants, almost 400 something. So thank you very much. Have a, have a good evening, everyone. Please allow me to leave the Zoom uh, meeting room.
and also uh, this barcode you can scan for your attendance and uh, for the certificate also for the speakers you will be personally uh, sent uh, by email so for the speakers you don't need to scan this this is or for the attendance thank you very much Terima kasih, thank you.
Okay, thank you all for participating in this event. Uh, I will end the meeting. See you again in the next event. Bye-bye.